Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and today we're joined by Derek Binner to discuss the latest trailer for Mario Kart 8. So let's get started. Alright Derek, so I just finished doing our epic analysis of Mario Kart 8, um, which <laughs> I think you just saw as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I described it as effing amazing. Because <laughs> uh, I had no involvement in that one whatsoever. You're the Mario Kart guy. I'm more of a just a casual fan. I pick up a game on occasion. My two favorites being Double Dash and uh, DS. So I have no real way of helping you out beyond just surface level stuff. So what you pulled out of that trailer uh, is kind of amazing to me. <laughs> Dude, it surprised even me, man. Like, I, I, we were talking about this before. It's like, oh, these analyses won't be that bad, you know? Like, mm -hmm. all the Mario Kart footage is, you know, there. it's only five levels. It's a sorted by level, even. How, how, how hard can it be? Then I had the brilliant idea, and I say that sarcastically, <laughs> of trying to link all those scenes together, um, you know, by picking out details in each one and trying to find those same details in the other scenes. And that drove me nuts. Like, I think, I hope I made it look easy, because it was really hard to do in real life. <laughs> no, it, it like, did look like, oh, that, that, it sounds easy, but no, I, knowing how analysis, analyses go, yep. I know how freaking hard that was, so, that was, I mean, back uh, pat on the back all around. Yeah, that was driving <laughs> me nuts. So yeah, I wanted to hold off on doing the discussion until I got the analysis done, because I feel like it gave us, I mean, it, it definitely gave me like a better understanding of the game, because before mm. that, it was just like a bunch of random clips. That's kind of hard to pick out anything from, but now that we've actually like seen how they all kind of fit together, um, I think we have a better idea of how this game's going to play out. Or like, let's talk, oh, absolutely. Or, yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, before we dive into the nitty gritty, uh, let's do what we normally do. What are your surface level impressions of this trailer, you know, when they first showed it off at the Nintendo Direct? When they first showed it off, um, it, my whole thing was, looks really pretty, yep. level designs look pretty cool, um, but it didn't really... I guess grab me right away. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, cool. It still looks good. I can't wait to see more, that sort of thing. Right. But after seeing your analysis, <laughs> I got, huh, there's a lot more to this than you think. And it's, a lot of it is surface level and whatnot, but it is the, the way they're designing it, the way the levels are being put together, there's a lot of thought going into it. Um, the characters themselves, it just, it's really coming together uh, beautifully, I think. And I think it is going to be. Uh, it, feels like it might be one of the better Mario Kart games to come out in recent years. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, I, I kind of agree. Like, it looks really cool here. It's always hard to tell going off trailers, of course. And I enjoy my time with it at E3. But, you know, when this trailer opens up at the airport, and you see the flame, the flames, the planes <laughs> flying around. It's like, holy crap, this looks epic. <laughs> um, and that's the case for, you know, most of the levels they, they showed off here. Um, it, it, they just all look really good. Um, you know, just from a you know, just from a gameplay perspective, and the amount of details here are just insane. Um, like I like in the in cruise top or cloud top cruise. Uh, mm -hmm. When I first when I was you know, re when I was looking over the footage, I first saw that there was like I'm like oh look, there's a question mark on the ground. That's cool. Then I came back to it later. I'm like wait a second, that's not just a question mark. That's a question block. That vines actually coming out or the beanstalks actually coming out of a question block. just like in Mario games. Holy crap, that's awesome. <laughs> that blew my mind when I saw it. When you right. pointed that out, I'm like. That's weird. Beanstalk in the clouds, and like I f my first thought was, oh, they're taking notes from the uh, new the new Kirby game. Uh, <laughs> right. That was my, that, that was my I, first. I thought, thought that too. Yeah, exactly. And then you pointed out the question block, and I'm like, holy crap, that's amazing! It's right. Just, like just giant beanstalk. It fits in with all of Mario from before. We got the airships going in. Yep. Uh, I mean, the level looked cool before, but just that little detail brings it out so much that that much thought went into these, like, each level. Yeah, the only way I could see them improving on that is if you actually, like, drove up a spiraling beanstalk from ground level to the clouds above. But now I'm just, oh. I'm just getting greedy now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so the trailer itself looked really good. So let's go ahead and, uh, you know, let's break it down by level, though. So first okay. off, we have the airport, which, you know, appears to be called Sunshine Airport. Um, and what struck me most about this level is just how detailed it was. Like, the bulk of the analysis, uh, or, or rather, the, you know, I spent the most time on the airport in our analysis. Because there's so mm -hmm. many details there, including details from other courses in the game, where it, it basically confirms uh, the names of the other courses we see in the trailer, uh, plus a few more that we that haven't been shown off yet, uh, mm -hmm. which, which is really cool. Um, so, I think, yeah, I mean, we kind of already talked about it, but I think this level just looks super energetic, like... There's a lot going on, and I, I still we still don't fully understand how it's all going to work. Like with the planes, for instance, like is it just like one plane cycling around coming in for landings? We never actually see any planes land in the trailer. 
Um, yeah. So where exactly are they coming from? Do they land, or is there just one in the level that you only come across once? Or I guess, well, there are at least two, because you see two planes taking off. Um, so that has been unusual. But uh, A little bit. Um, question for you, though, since yeah. I didn't get the chance to play Mario Kart at E3 much. Did the levels change dynamically at all when you were playing it? <sighs> uh, playing those levels, or were they pretty stand? Like looking stationary. Looking back on it, they were pretty pretty static. You know, I'd say your you know, typical love, you know, typical Mario Kart levels of interactivity or or mm -hmm. you know being dynamic. Yeah, when I saw this, I was like thinking oh, maybe they're gonna like maybe the level changes a little bit with each lap, you know, because you can't have the same plane like always fly over you unless it happens at specific times and they just timed out the trailer so that they you know could fly under it or come out under it or you know. Right. Yeah, you know, the typical trailer manipulation that you can do to make your game look cooler. Yeah, I mean uh, that, that's a good question. Um, I, I'm not sure how. Yeah, I'm not sure how much they're gonna. Yeah, how they, how they're gonna work exactly because we only see those two planes. I tried looking in the background too to see if there were any other planes queued up, and I couldn't see any. Mm -hmm. um, now I also wonder like if those planes are actually gonna be obstacles. Now in the trailer, it looked like it's pretty easy to just go underneath them, but uh, you know I, I wonder if like you actually can hit them and be taken out or something. It. I mean, maybe by a wheel or something, uh, but it seems like I don't, you know, I'm not, I never played Mario Kart 7, so I'm not sure how the whole uh, uh, hang glider thing works. Right. So I'm not sure if you can, like, really curve how much you go up, or you just... You can, you have, you have a good amount of control over it. Okay, so. so theoretically, you could tilt yourself up to hit the plane, not that you want it, to. It did appear that way, yeah, it definitely looks like you could. I mean, there are other obstacles there in the way, as, long, as well as coins, so... Obviously, we'll be able to move around left to right, but I wasn't sure about the up to down, right. up and down movement. Uh, no, it, it's it's. I'm very curious about that, and I I mean it is part of it is part of the Star Cup, so typically those are a lot more challenging. So I want to say true. yes. It's a good point. That is definitely a good point. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, and someone else mentioned in the comments that they think all the levels shown in the, tra in the trailer may be from the Star Cup. Um, the reason I don't think that's the case is because you know there's usually only four. Uh, courses per cup, except for the original Mario Kart, and I think the Game Boy Advance one. Um, mm -hmm. And there were five shown in the trailer, uh, unless of course that that unless of course they're actually extending the cups to be five to be five races, which would be awesome. Yeah, uh, I'd be down for that. <laughs> yeah, I'd be down for that too. <laughs> that'd be that'd be pretty rad, and it would make it, it kind of makes sense as to why the airport would have names for those five courses. Um, although they also had names for other courses too, uh, so mm -hmm. that you know, does kind of shoot a hole in that theory. Um, yeah, so overall, Sunshine Airport looked awesome. Moving on, we had uh, the next trailer, or next course shown off, a Sweet Sweet Canyon. Um, and this one, it's like a candy-filled course. We saw a couple of glimpses of it before at E3. Um, that mm -hmm. I was able to like link into the new footage. And uh, it looks like in this one, yeah, you'll just be racing, cr uh, you know, past like a bunch of you know candy-themed obstacles. At one point, you go into like this this lake filled with soda, and you can see like bottles of spraying soda everywhere. Uh, yeah, that, that was really cool. It's just a really cool effect. Yeah, it looked really neat. And at first, I didn't even realize it was underwater. Uh, I just thought it was like a mist type thing. But no, you're actually yeah. very clearly like in the lake because you can see the little propeller on your on your on your car too. Mm, um, plus the uh, cheap cheeps in the background. Exactly. Well, at first, it's a funny it's a funny story. Real quick, I thought mm -hmm. those were fly, those were fly guys at first because they they were red and um but I, you know I thought they were like or the guys from Mario Two, the flying enemies of Mario Two. Yeah, fly uh, guys. Yeah, I think so. So I thought that's what they were. Um, and then I went back. I'm like, wait, this is underwater. Those are probably cheap sheeps. <laughs> so, um, and then you, know, you, have the, you have the branching path there, which appears, you know, it, it, both of them will take you out of the lake. And then it looks like eventually you'll um, go in the hang gliding section where you go around the, this giant cake. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then and then you'll eventually go through like a small like village or whatever. Uh, so, what did you think of that level? Uh, I mean, you know. A lot of times when you see these uh, candy themed levels anymore, they like they look really good, and all it's all about making the food look appetizing at the same time. Right. And I don't know about you, but I kind of want to have a gingerbread code now. <laughs> Wait. Uh, he, oh, right. I know. Gingerbread. It's it's like oh, that looks delicious. Coming to me, Toad. <laughs> I'm eating <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo should hand those out. They really. Um, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, but no, other than that, I mean, a lot of people were t commenting already how Sweet Sweet Canyon reminds them a lot of Sugar Rush from Wreck It Ralph. I thought the same. Yep. Maybe I maybe that's just ingrained in our thoughts now because there's been candy themed levels before. I oh yeah. Think. Well, Mario Kart but, had uh, Mario Kart had like a whole Yoshi's Cookie themed one in Double Dash. It was it was a it was a battlefield or battle mm -hmm. course. Oh but. yeah yeah yeah. You're right you're right. So the candy themed is pretty popular, but it's just more into mind. And I think the thing that intrigues me most, I mean, the course itself looks pretty cool. I really like how it, uh, it's all standing out. 
Um, I think this might be our first dual character level with the whole Peach and Daisy being part of it. And like picking out the whole fact that, that cake, the cake topping looks like a crown. Right. I mean, that's, you know, that's great level of attention to detail. Um, the level itself, uh, you know, I didn't get much of an impression from it. Just, you know, sort of your basic yeah. level with multiple paths. Uh, I mean, the visual, visually it looks great. But right. as far as the track itself, not, I don't think quite reaching the level of the of other ones shown in the trailer. You actually just complain now. Like, I feel the exact same way. Like, it looks fine. I'm sh- I mean, I'm sure it'll be fun. But, like, just looking at it. Um, it, yeah, it didn't like. I, I'm not in love with it. Like, it looks it looks like a you know relatively standard Mario Kart track. Hmm. Um, yeah, it did nothing like amazing going on there. Though I do think the leg section looks kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Well, next up we had uh, Thwomp Ruins, which is something we actually got a look at in the first trailer as well from E3. But back then they didn't show off anything distinct from it. So I, I, while I pegged as being a ruins type level, um, I didn't know anything else about it. Hmm. Uh, but now we can see the Thwomps will play a pretty big role in this level. Uh, or at least in one in one segment, although there are stone wheels too that appear um, in the tunnels. And it looks like tunnels actually will play a big role as well, as you enter at least, I think, two of them in the trailer. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I think, uh, and they have like anti-gravity sections as well. Um, so, what, yeah, what, what were your thoughts on this one? I, I'm liking the way that they're, like, it seems like the anti-gravity are... You know, it's meant to create a different kind of like level creation and different ways to handle courses in the game. Um, so I thought it would just be sort of it makes it feel like sort of sort of gimmicky. But I like how they're introducing with at least especially with this level a risk versus reward system because right. as you pointed out, you have that straight pat- pathway, but you have to go directly under a thwomp, or you can take the side pass on the, using the wall grab and take a bit longer but also be guaranteed uh be have a better guarantee of not getting hit by anything exactly uh and i think this level really epitomizes that risk versus reward uh element to it and that's you know sort of like how you are with uh thwomps and you know if somebody goes ahead of you goes under it and sends a swamp down what's you know you gotta be ready to dodge and stuff uh and it uh the it's sort of the opposite from uh, sweet sweet mountain for me because the visuals are kind of cool but they don't really super impressed me it's just a, yeah. a nice looking track but the course itself looks like a lot of fun yeah <laughs> again you you kind of nailed it because again like going off the with the initial e3 um announcement of this level or you know the couple clips they showed you know it, it it's like okay <laughs> that <laughs> looks like a you know pretty generic ruins type level and even yeah what they showed off here isn't especially grabbing from a visual perspective but it does look neat from a from a gameplay perspective, especially with that scene you just mentioned with the three paths, um, or even four paths if you count the option to go in the, into the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it looks I, yeah I, I, I think it looks like it'll be a fun course. And I do like the little detail, or should I say big detail, with the <laughs> giant thwomp that you enter through the mouth on uh, if you need to go into the next cave. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And there was actually something similar to that in the next level shown off called Bone Dry Ruins. Where at one point you see like a giant dry Bowser head that you actually drive into uh, into a cave. Um, now this level looks, I think this level actually looks pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's like a desert or you know like a desert boneyard type area. Uh, there's like bones all over the place, and there's like these toad pirate ships roaming around. I don't know why, <laughs> and I don't even know what they're cruising through. It looks like they're actually sailing through the sand, as far as I can tell. Um, because you actually see one of them moving in the background, and I don't think there's any water around there. <laughs> and Not then, that I saw. <laughs> and then you even see, like, a lighthouse, too, at one point in the background. And I don't know if it's, like, attracting those ships or <laughs> what's going on here. Um, well, well, I did see somebody in the comments mention, like, maybe this is, like, some disaster happened here and, like, this beach became dried up. I'm glad you mentioned that's that. That's why I have the, those bones and stuff. Yeah, I saw that same comment, and... Uh, Oh, actually, here we go. Yeah, it was from I am Bubba one two three four. Um, yeah, and he mentioned like, what if there was a massive logic-defying drought, and that's why there are ships everywhere. I think that'd be an awesome idea. Now, I don't know how they would convey that. I mean, mm. I guess. I mean, I guess actually. Well, no. I mean, I guess it actually would be kind of like a. It, it reminds me of a Typhoon Lagoon in Disney World. I, I was thinking the exact yeah, same right? thing. Yeah, right. It's sort of that sort of that Disney design yeah, choice it, where. We, you have a story based on the visuals and exactly. not really anything else. That's what, I, so that would be awesome, actually. That would be a really cool detail, and it'd be something I'd like to see more of a Mario Kart. But I don't think they've, mm-hmm. I don't know if they've, they've even done that. Like, yeah, I'd love to see like basically like the aftermath of something, or you know, like something something with like a, you know a history behind it. Um, mm-hmm. and that would be a really that would be a really cool detail. 
Um, yeah. So yeah. So what are your overall thoughts on this on this course? I I like that they've had created so many different um, dry enemies that they can really go wild with all these like uh, this desert level and make it more of a boneyard because you, as you pointed out we got the dry pil- uh, piranha plant, right. dry Bowser, of course the dry bones everywhere. It, it gives it a lot more personality rather than just having dry bones everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they definitely uh, <laughs> expanded that cast a little bit, which is a good thing. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see like dry goombas and stuff like that pop up in places and stuff right. like that because there's there's a whole cast of those guys now. Yeah, exactly. Um, the level looks. Uh, really cool uh i mean it's there's the, all the different paths you got the little you got the standard little um attacks because obviously the whole split before going up, up the bone uh bridge i guess it would be when you go past the piranha plant the quicker way is actually a lot closer to the piranha uh dry piranha right and the longer way is farther away so once again i love that they're doing this whole risk versus reward thing and of course past mario games has done it but it seems a lot more um prevalent in this one it does yeah especially with the disparity between the courses or the the, the routes you know one being of course anti-gravity and the other not mm-hmm. and yeah we have seen that exact situation a couple times now which is which is really cool um yeah this is probably i would say this is probably my second he oh, it's hard to tell i would say it's pro- this is probably my second favorite level in the in the trailer i thought it looked yeah. really cool um, I'd go with either second or third favorite. Yeah, and, and there's still like a lot. There's still more we haven't seen. Like what exactly happens after you enter, you know, Dry Bowser's mouth. We all know mm-hmm. what happens between then and the finish line. Um, so I'm curious to see more of that one. Um, now the last level is one you know, we've already talked about a little bit, but it is probably um, one of the more intriguing. It's a uh, Cloud Top Cruise. It takes place in the sky, entirely in the sky. Um, Mm -hmm. where you start off racing on a beanstalk that I mentioned already, and then it takes you to the clouds, where eventually you race through an airship that launches you with a cannon into the sky. Um, You go past a Mario 3-style doom ship, and then you land on a high uh, platform in the clouds, in these stormy clouds. And there's, like, lightning firing everywhere. And, uh, and they're, and from, you know, as a point of analysis, it appears that they're striking only the uh, boost pads on the ground. Again, mm-hmm. adding another risk versus reward element here. It's like, oh, do I go for the for the boost or risk getting hit, or you know, do I just you know avoid it entirely? Um, and then eventually, you need know, fly back, you know, fly back to the beanstalk. Uh, mm-hmm. So, what are your what are your thoughts on this one? Well, this is my honestly, this is my favorite course. Yeah. that they've shown. Uh, visually, it looks amazing. I like the elements that they're adding to it. All the different places you ride over, it looks very solid. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of cool tricks going on here. Uh, it just has that right combination of visually interesting with a uh, really cool looking course design that makes you, you know, celebrates these uh, these aspects of Mario while also just making them a race course. Right. Uh, it just, I, I don't know, it just has that punch uh, that, you know, really makes Mario Kart stand out as far as course designs. I agree, and it's something, I was racking my brain, as far as I can think of offhand, it's something that hasn't quite been done before, at least in the 3D Mario Kart game. Um, the closest thing we've had to being like a, a level in the clouds, well, which actually literally was a level in the clouds, was I think from the Game Boy Advance version, um, mm-hmm. where I think they had one or two of them. Um, and that's actually the music I used in our in our analysis for that portion. Um, mm-hmm. But it is cool to see like a 3D take on that, you know, on that idea and expanding upon it with the beanstalk and, you know, just flying, you know, into this, you know, even higher into this stormy area. Um, yeah, I like the I like the diversity you experienced in this one. You know, you you, you go across you know enter several different distinct areas, and there's a mm-hmm. lot a lot going on. Um, yeah, I think we've had an airship course as well. I think I remember one from Mario Kart DS. I think. Oh, I, I mean know. that you're, you're right. That, I mean that's true. I guess I guess it does count technically. <laughs> it, it technically <laughs> right. counts. What I mean, what the the, well, the thing that this one does that I think we both like is it takes these separate elements, mashes them together, and makes it something feel a little bit more unique than either of the previous ones exactly yeah um i absolutely agree so um so quick question what so in order what are what was your track preference in this trailer which ones are your favorites you know and what what order would you put them in uh of course like i just said um the oh i can't think of i forgive me i've forgotten the name just go already. off whatever <laughs> just go off what <laughs> just describe them <laughs> the uh clouds okay uh, the cloud top course cruise. yep my my favorite I'm going to put second favorite as the uh, Sunshine Airport. Okay. Third fi- favorite as the uh, Dry Bones. Okay. And 
third, uh, fourth is uh, Thwomp Ruins, and fifth would be Sweet Sweet Mountain. Yeah, that's pretty close to me. I'd go Sunshine Airport, uh, th- th- what, Bone Dry Ruins, probably, mm-hmm. Cloud Top Cruise, Thwomp Ruins, and then, or sorry, Bone Dry Dunes, I meant before, and then, mm-hmm. yeah, Sweet Sweet Canyon last. Um, now, there is something I noticed between all these levels, and I think, I think that encompasses every level we've seen so far. Uh, at least of the new ones, maybe not the remakes. And that's they all incorporate uh, at least uh, anti-gravity sections. And I think, too, they all have flying sections as well, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks like they're going all out in this game. Because as I recall, Mario Kart 7 is a little bit more limited. Uh, you know, it, it didn't have those features in every level. Um, and, you know, we haven't seen every level yet, of course, too. But it really does seem like they're just going all out, like balls to the wall with these designs. Mm-hmm. And, and, I hope, and I hope they do, because... Honestly, I, the reason I didn't play Mario Kart 7 is because I picked up um, uh, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. Right. And that did the transformation aspect so well that I'm, I'm looking at people's reviews, I'm looking at play, gameplay, and I'm thinking, that's just not as exciting to me. No. Uh, Sega, Sega did it so much better, and I had so much fun with that game. Mario Kart exci- excites me because it seems like they're taking, of course not copying this one exactly, but they're taking what they established with Mario Kart 7 and expanding upon it greatly to make it that much more fresh. And I think that's why I'm a lot more excited for this one than I was for 7. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, at first glance it looks very similar, but it does really seem like they're kind of going a little bit crazy with some of these ideas. And there's a lot we haven't seen, like, um, you know, what new power-ups might be introduced. And of course, you know, we've barely seen what what classic tracks are going to be bring back and how they're going to modify them with these new mechanics. So mm-hmm. I'm just stoked to see more. Um, I'm hoping we'll see more before E3. I mean, if it's coming out in spring, we basically have to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, I think that wraps it up for our discussion of Mario Kart 8, because I have to go, <laughs> literally, to the... <laughs> I have to go fly a plane myself. Uh, Believe it or not, guys, he actually delayed his flight a day so he could get this analysis finished for you. That's how that's dedicated the, <laughs> That is his dedication. So. I, I spent literally far more money on changing a flight than I will ever make back of the analysis video. <laughs> but uh, especially if Nintendo ends up claiming it. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, All right. So um, thanks, guys, for watching. Thanks, Derek, for joining us. If you liked this video, please make sure to follow us and like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explained. There are links in the description below. Otherwise, keep an eye on GameExplained.com for more on Mario Kart 8 and other things gaming as well. Um, I'm sure we'll have lots more on this game coming up in the near future. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.